Hello, my name is Julissa Conklin. I'm a senior psychology major at Hampton University. The following presentation is a proposal for my research on alternative treatments for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is a neurodevelopmental disorder that generally affects children beginning in their preschool years. Symptoms of ADHD are pervasive patterns of inappropriate impulsiveness and hyperactive behaviors. Neuroimaging techniques have allowed researchers to discover that the caudic nucleus and the putamen, which together form the dorsal striatum, are underdeveloped brain structures in patients with ADHD. Additionally, other evidence has shown that children with ADHD do not activate frontal striatal regions the same as normally developing children. ADHD affects 3% to 9% of school-aged children. According to epidemiology studies, on a national level, 55% of children with ADHD are on stimulant medication as a form of treatment. While stimulant medication has been found to be effective in reducing the symptoms of ADHD, research has revealed that preschool children diagnosed with ADHD experienced a higher rate of emotional adverse events to the stimulant medication method. The research question states, is physical play combined with family counseling the best approach for treating the symptoms of and changing brain activation patterns associated with ADHD? The hypothesis states, physical play combined with family counseling is the best approach for reducing the symptoms of ADHD such as impulsivity and attentiveness and hyperactivity and increasing frontal striatal connections in the prefrontal cortex and stimulating the release of the appropriate amount of dopamine. The total sample size for the proposed study will be around 60 boys in early to middle childhood, ranging from ages 6 to 10. Participants will be recruited from six elementary schools in the southeastern United States. The proposed study will be a longitudinal experimental between slash within subjects design. FMRIs will be used for pre and post experiment testing to assess brain activation patterns. Lastly, participants will be randomly assigned to one of two treatment conditions, play therapy or stimulant medication. The Connors Teachers Parent Rating Scale, CTRS, CPRS, and the ADHD Rating Scale 4 are assessments that attain a description on the child's behavior in the previous six months. These rating scales seek to gain an understanding from the parents and teachers regarding the incidence of each symptom of ADHD based on the criteria outlined in the DSM-4. The proposed study will employ a replication of the switch task procedure used in previous research. This switch task is staged as a minimal computer game that is comprised of two similar yet opposing tasks. Additionally, the proposed study will employ a replication of play therapy also used in previous research. Participants will meet with the therapist for two sessions per week for the duration of the study. Once the informed consent form has been received from each participant, the CPRS, CTRS, and ADHD rating scale 4 will be completed by the parents and teachers of the students. After these rating skills are completed and returned to the researchers, they will be scored. Next, each participant will complete a functional MRI switch test to assess the brain activation patterns of each child before beginning treatment. The response and feedback screens are shown here. The switch task will last for a total of 10 minutes. Next, the 60 participants will be randomly assigned to the play therapy condition or the stimulant medication condition. Treatment will continue over the duration of 15 months. Participants in the play therapy condition will meet twice with a professional counseling psychologist for one hour. Participants in the stimulant medication condition will take a daily dose of Ritalin, the stimulant commonly prescribed for ADHD. Every parent and guardian and teacher will complete the CPRS, CTRS, and ADHD rating scale for every month, and every three months, the participants will complete the functional MRI switch task. At the end of 15 months, each of the participants will complete each measure once more for post-treatment testing. Data from the proposed study will be analyzed using a between-within-subject analysis of variance and a random effect analysis. The repeated measures will be used to track and demonstrate significant change over the duration of the study and between treatment conditions. One of the major implications for the proposed research is the possibility of ethnic differences in effective treatment of ADHD and or symptoms of ADHD. Statistics from the 2008 National Survey indicate disparities among the population of children diagnosed with ADHD. The statistics mentioned here on the slide 
present the possibility of black and Latino boys being overdiagnosed for the disorder of ADHD. With this in mind, it is imperative to study and develop alternative treatments for ADHD and or symptoms of ADHD with lower risk associated. A treatment option with lower associated risk could possibly be more effective in treating black and Latino boys with ADHD or symptoms of ADHD. Thank you for your time.